Hello uh, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start a small series on the M1928 Havoc attack like you see here. Um, we're going to do two different little mini series basically. One's going to be about the Havasack, the different pieces of equipment it has on it and uh, how to basically set it up as you're seeing now in front of you. And then the second one will be how to do a bigger version of the Havasack set up for marching which has the full packed tail and tent and everything mounted to it. So let's make a start. Right guys, so here you have laid out the basic parts of the haversack. So obviously in the middle here you've got the haversack itself. Then you've got the uh, meat can pouch. You've got the M7 scabbard, which is used for the M1 bayonet, which I'll be using as a pointy stick. Here you've got the uh, pack tail, complete with its leather strap that fits it to the haversack. Over this side you've got an M1910 T-handle shovel inside the M1910 cover. And here you've got an M1943 or M43 entrenching tool with the M43 cover on that. Now for the purposes of uh, this video we're going to be mounting the 43 not the 1910 and we will be getting taking this out of the picture because this will be used for the marching haversack not the basic haversack loadout that we're doing here. Right here we go then so let's start with the actual main haversack itself so as I've mentioned before People think these are a bag, but they are not a bag. They are a series of flaps and straps that kind of hold themselves together and you get what is sort of like a bag. So let's go over the features of the haversack here whilst it's done up. At the front, you'll see it's got a fit in here, or the top I should say. This is where you fit your uh, cover for your e-tool. On the sides, you'll see that there's these four cutouts here. That's for use for attaching the meat can pouch. We'll show you this all, by the way, as we get it going down. If I lift the cover over, you get to see how it is really just a series of flaps and not a bag. So you've got a flap on each side, like so. And you see on one side you've got the, uh, a strap and on the other side you've got the attach and buckle for said strap. Then you've got this middle section here, which is for all intents and purposes the bottom and the front of the haversack. So inside this, you see where I've got my finger now, that's where you feed the straps through into the buckle to give yourself a bit of a security and you open that down and you can see the haversack in its entirety so it's basically made out of a main middle section here with the belts and everything fit to the central flap and then the cover right guys now with the haversack turned over we can show you the details on the back so let's start with the suspender section you see it's got a full set of suspenders fit to it as part of it you can't remove them they'll be used to attach it either to your pistol belt or your cartridge belt you can also use them to wear it as a backpack by fitting the buckles down here to the D-ring you can see here where there's one on each side that are attached to this central flap. Now them D-rings can pop through these little gaps here that you have, these cutouts. Now these cutouts that go all the way across the length of it here are for fitting the pack tail cover. So we won't be worrying about them at the minute but they will be used to pop these D-rings through. So I'll just show you how that works. So basically guys, all you have to do is get this little D-ring here and if you put it through sort of sideways, like so and then you do the same on the other side like so that then is going to give you the back end to have something to clip to so if you're wearing it as a backpack for example you'd have that clipped sort of like so, but we'll show that in more detail later. But you want to have them set up with the D-strings like that before we start putting this together and packing it all up. So whilst that's flat, we'll just get that out of the way. Right, the next part we're going to look at is the part that you want to be fitting to the haversack first. So here we've got a M1943 e-tool cover. You see that's a very simple little design. If I put my pointy stick away, spin it over. You see on the back, that's got this wire hanger. Well, I don't know if that's actually called a wire hanger, but that's what I'm going to know it as. This is a Type 2 one. So you can see you can adjust that to be in three different positions depending on the height you want your e-tool to be at. The earlier version of the 43 did not have the adjustments. Right, so let me just show you how this cover works quickly. So you've got a lift the dot here, you simply pop that up, and then you take your 43 e-tool, and you simply slide that in there like so, and then you pull, you lift the dot over, and now you've got your e-tool in its cover, ready to go. But for when you're attaching it to the haversack, you want the e-tool out of it, so I'll be removing that before we mount it. Alright guys, let's mount the e-tool cover. So basically, it's dead simple, you just get your wire belt here, you see at the top, 
and that goes into these two holes on the fountain there. So if I hopefully don't get in the way of the camera and hopefully you can get a half decent shot of what I'm doing, you simply fit that through there like so. And then you twist it and get the other one in as well. It can be a little bit awkward. And there you go. That cover is now securely fitted to the haversack. Right, so the next part that you want to get fitted to your haversack is the meat can pouch. So basically this is just a little bag that holds your canteen and your utensils. So you see it's dead simple, there's not a lot to it. You've got one little strap here with a buckle that you use to open and close it. On the back of it you've just got these four, not quite D-rings, but these four little mountain bits here. They are used to hold it to the haversack. The strap for holding it on is fitted to the haversack itself and we'll show you that in a minute. And if I spin it round and open it up, you see you've got space here for your mess kit. And at the back here you've got these three little cutouts, they're for your eating utensils. So you have got room in there for a spoon, fork and a knife. Right guys, so now to fit the meat can pouch, as you can see again, you've got the four holes here. If you're wondering why I've put this on first, that's because the e-tool cover can be a bit of a pain to get on if the meat can pouch is already fitted. So what you want to do is get your meat can pouch and put it basically where it's going to be. Now I find you flip this over. And you've got these two straps, one on each side. So what you basically want to do is get the metal loops. You pull them through the slot like that. And you get your strap. And this is a bit fiddly because they're very tight. Well, at least this one is. And you feed that through the loop. Like so. So that's the first bit fitted. And you get your next loop. And you feed that through. So then that side's done. Now you can just simply go over to the other side, pull the loop through again, get the strap, pull that through, get the next one through the loop, get your strap, pull that through. So that's how you fit the meat can pouch. Now that may look a bit rubbish, but that's only because it is a bit rubbish. That's a really strange way of design that I've never fully understood it. Because if you apply lots of force to the meat can pouch, you can pull these straight out, obviously. But uh, it does do the job. So you can see there, the pouch is fitted. You can, you know, it's not just going to fall out. There is tension to it. And also that would have to fight gravity to become undone. So now with the pouch fitted, you can see that you've got the entrenching tool underneath it. And that's the main part of the haversack almost finished. Right guys, so the next thing I'm going to attach is the M7 scabbard, as seen here. You can also use the M3 scabbard. And where this goes on is basically the same as the e-tool. So on the side here, at the top, you've got the two mountain fittings. And then at the bottom here, you've got this little strap that's kind of been put through on a loop. So you, again, use the wire hanger to fit that on here. So again, that's exactly the same as the e-tool. So you simply pop it through the eyelet, like so. And then you crease it up, it can be a little bit awkward, especially with these old original things. And you get the next side through like that. And then obviously that's flapping around. So what you do is that bit will fold in to the side. Now, whilst it's set up like this, that obviously looks stupid because there's nothing in the haversack, so that's just making everything awkward. So for the time being, We'll leave the scabbard loose like that, and now we're going to go over filling up the haversack. Right then guys, this is the bit where it starts to get a bit strange. So, when the haversack's been filled up, obviously there'd have been a lot of variation from soldier to soldier. They would have done things how they preferred. What I'm going to be putting in here today is a very basic set of equipment that you can customise and feel free to do whatever you want. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pup tent half. This could be replaced with a, a blanket or clothing, shirt, stuff like that. But the main thing you're trying to do here is make yourself a solid but padded base on your haversack. So if you remember again, I said about them D-rings, what they've done is they've given this flap an almost natural bottom section. You can see there where it pulls on the D-ring. So I'm going to get my tent half, which has been folded up. And I'm going to place that right in the centre of the haversack like so. 
so that that's pretty much at the base where this flap wants to pull on them D-rings. So that's given me a little padded section to go again from back so that anything that the soldier now loads into it isn't going to be just sticking in their back and be mega uncomfortable. Right guys, so now I'm going to take the other parts of the pup tent. So you'll have your pull and you want to tuck that basically into the side like so. So you've made yourself a nice section. Then I'm going to add in a couple of sets of rations. And what I like to do, I see most, a lot of people stack them either like this or they put them down like that. And what I like to do is to have two of them, one there and one there. Again, not saying this is the exact way that they were done in the manual, but this is sort of a representation of what they would have done in the actual field. So you've got some rations, you've got your pup half and your peg and your pull, sorry. Then I'm going to get my pegs that I've got in a nice little peg bag. Now, these pegs would often not be in the bag. You can wrap them up inside your pup tent half. But I've got them in the little bag. And I'm going to pop them there. And then I simply have my canvas water basin, which again is not something that you necessarily always have. Probably much more likely not to have it than have it, but bear with me guys, this is a representation. And I'm going to put that like that. Now the reason I've done it with these items like this is because I've got a couple of rations, I've got the pup tent half and everything for the buddy system and they're really just representing anything you could put in. So you could replace these with some socks, with some extra shirt, extra clothing of various different types, you could replace the pup tent with some extra clothing, you could replace these with more rations, personal items, anything you really feel is appropriate to go in there because again it's not a hard written list of things that are meant to be in here at all times and the soldiers really did set up what they felt was appropriate. Anyway, right guys, do it up. We'll start up by putting your top flap over the middle like so. Then you're going to get this side and you're going to pull that over so you're starting to get an idea of where everything's going to be centred. And notice that these straps will probably line up with one of the rings. And if they don't quite line up, it doesn't matter. You just pull them down to where you need them. And you've always got a bit of play in that flap itself. So what I'm going to do is initially not fit on the bottom strap here. And you'll see why in a little while. So what I'm instead going to do is get the middle one. Pull it over like this. And you're going to put the strap through there like that. Get it in your buckle. And then before you do it tight, put it through the other bit, otherwise you'll loosen it when you're trying to secure it. Then I'm going to pull that mega tight, like so, and then pull that through there, making sure it doesn't go loose. And then the other end of the strap here you can feed through a loop and you can leave that hanging, or you can tuck it in there like so. But you want that to be nice and tight. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the top one. Pull it nice and tight, get it through there, just give it an extra tighten and once again pop that through there. Notice that hasn't got a loop to go through because the flap hasn't come up high enough and depending on how fill, much you fill this up depends on how high or low that flap will sit. Right guys, so now we're going to do the bottom strap and I'm going to show you why I haven't tightened it up yet. So you've got your main bottom strap and then you've got this strap here this is what holds the top of the uh, haversack down. So you can see you've got a little buckle there. So you want to pull that, get your strap, and that goes through just like the rest of them. And you can pull that nice and tight so that now the bag is essentially done up. You're just left with this one strap here. But the reason I haven't done that is because you can use that to stop your e-tool moving about. Right, so we're going to open up the e-tool cover. And then the little popper there. Get the e-tool and slide it in as I show you later. I'll have to just come around to this side for a minute. So that will just slide through there. Push it in all the way. The old thing's got a bit tight. There you go. And then if you can get under your meat cam pouch like this, 
and do your popper up, you've now got your e-tool in its case. So that's fitted to the haversack, but you notice that's going to flap around like mad. Then you can get this strap, you can feed it through the loop you want it to be through, just like the rest of the straps. And then you can bring it round the e-tool like this. I'm hoping you can see this well enough. And then although it is now mega tight, you can then just get through this buckle here. Make it as tight as you can. And now you can see that handle isn't wobbling around at all. Apologies for making the camera wobble. So now you've got the pouch for the meat can fitted, the e-tool and it's covered fitted, and the bayonet fitted. And now that the haversack's full up, you can get your bayonet and slide that in the side there, like so. Right guys, now you've got your e-tool fitted, there's just a couple more bits to add. First one that you might as well get out of the way is your bayonet. So that just slips in your scabbard as usual. And that's one bit quickly out of the way. Now, this is a bit janky how that's fitted on the side of the haversack. You might find that gets in the way, that's awkward to get to. That's generally not a very good design. And in a lot of photos you'll see these are removed from the haversack and they'll be fitted on the belt. And that's what I do in my impression. But for the sake of this video, we're going to be going through it with a fit to the haversack, how it's meant to be done in the manual. Right guys, so let's get on to the uh, meat can pouch then. So if I move this over here a little bit, and hopefully angle it up so you can see inside. So again, as I said earlier, you've got your three gaps there for your utensils. So I've got just a set of reproduction utensils here. The spoon pops in like so. Then you've got your fork. And your knife can go in the middle. Then you simply take the mess kit and pop that in the pouch. Now, this is an original haversack. I think that's shrunk quite a bit over the years and stuff. And with the e-tool in, that's very hard to get the mess kit in. So what I have to do is kind of put it in lengthways and then spin it. And that's how mine sits, like that. Now they should just go in nice and sideways, but I'm gonna assume this is because it's an age thing. But then once you've got that all inside there, you simply pull the cover down and do this buckle up like all the other buckles. And again, mine is extremely short and I don't know if that's true it's shrunk or anything like that. But there you have it guys. So you now have a complete set up haversack. So you've got, so you've got your mess tin with your utensils, you've got your e-tool in its cover, you've got your M1 bayonet on its scabbard, which will do nothing but annoy you, I guarantee, because that's just a terrible, terrible system. And then you've got the haversack itself with a half a pup tent with the pulls, the peg, your rope is inside the pup tent roll up itself. And you've got some rations in there and just some whatever odds and ends you want to put in it, really. They varied quite a lot. So now the how you technically should have it is out of the way. I'm going to show you how I tend to have it when I'm using it in displays and at reenactment events. Right guys, so the first thing I've done is I've took this off the haversack. It is not a good design to have it there. It's hard to get to, it makes the sack more annoying to use. And my impression of the Second Armour Division is based on photos of using where they actually have these fitted to their belts and not the haversack. So the first thing I do is get rid of this. The second thing I do is I remove the e-tool from it. And again, this is based on a real photo. I'll get a picture of the photo and load it up here for you. Let me just dismount this and show you what I do instead. All right, guys, so as you can see, I've removed the e-tool. That means you can tighten this bottom strap up a lot better. You could do that anyway if you were willing to use, have the e-tool loose and flapping around. That's what tightened the bottom up and made it so stuff's a lot less likely to fall out of here because it got a nice tight base to it. That's also made the meat can pouch a lot easier to use because that's not so tight against the e-tool. And basically what you do is, and I'll load another photo up here of what I based this on, is you simply get your cover, and if I go around the other side, you can just slide that under there like that, to about that height. You don't really find that has any effect, this doesn't flap around too much. So what we've got here is based on a real photo that I found. I say found, that was on the internet so someone else found it, of a soldier that had this just packed in the back like that. And that is obviously because they couldn't get to it on their own, so 
but like this you can swing your hand over your back and you can just pull this out and in the photo they even have it undone you can see it's just like that in their picture so that's how I tend to run my haversack and it does make a lot of sense another thing you can do guys which I've seen photos of is sometimes you see the meat cam pouch and that looks very squared off now obviously this has got a nice round mess tin in it but sometimes that looks very squared off and the general consensus is because that's been packed full of the uh, ration boxes so if you see a photo of this and that looks completely squared off that's probably because that's rammed full of ration boxes so that's just another little idea that you might want to have for your impression so there you have it guys the m1928 havoc sack and the different components of it now i know i'm not exactly a professional at this but i hope that you've been able to see at least how to assemble this how the different parts go on and roughly what uh, have an idea for what you can put in it for your impressions remember that everything inside it can be basically customized how you wanted there are different ways to do it weirdly enough the manual that i got seen here only covers what should be inside this when that's using the pack tail so the next little series that i do where this is being done as a whole march and have a sack with everything inside it will be done exactly as it should be done the manual when they started disassembling and messing about for in the field use there seemed to have been a lot more variation to it I've seen many photos of many different setups of these haversacks, so I'm not going to definitely say this is exactly what you should do. This is how I do it, and at least you've been shown how all the different pieces fit together. So hopefully that helped some of you, and I'll see you next time.